Well, brothers and sisters, we are on to part 10 of our series on the nature and character of God. And I hope as you go along, you've been able to glean from this uh, series why it is that knowing who God is is so important. I know that uh, some aspects of this have been a really tough slog in terms of uh, tracking along with, with some of those concepts about God that are just so difficult uh, to grasp. But nonetheless, those concepts are, they help to shape uh, who we see God to be, obviously, but then also how we respond to that. And for that, I am grateful. I have been learning a lot throughout this uh, series, and I hope and pray very much that you have too. Well, today we are talking about God's omnipresence. That is, the reality that God is everywhere at once. There is nowhere that God is not. God always is everywhere. And the traditional way to look at this is, is to simply uh, focus on that, that reality of God's presence um, in isolation from some other factors. But we're going to go a, a little bit deeper, I think, with that and, and talk about presence in a more substantial and significant kind of way. But before we get too far into that, we need to look at the scriptures. And so today, um, our scripture passage that we are going to look at is from Psalm 139. We're going to read the whole psalm. And this is, uh, this is a psalm of David's. And David has a, just a, a profoundly deep understanding of God's presence, one that is going to inform us and guide us as we look at uh, who God is in this sense. So, Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be too dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. 
Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord? And abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You'll notice maybe as you read through that psalm with me, or if you have read through that psalm before, uh, it's a very familiar psalm, you will notice that there are a number of different feelings at play in this psalm. There is, in some sense, in this psalm, a, a sense of comfort in the reality that the psalmist sees God as always present. But there is also a profound sense of discomfort in knowing that there is nowhere that the psalmist, that David can flee from God. There is nowhere where the psalmist can hide and when in the end, the psalmist says, you know, search my heart and see if there is any offensive way in me, that is a place that the psalmist is able to get to, but that is not where the psalmist starts. The psalmist starts by saying God has searched him and God does know him, but we get this real uh, discomfort there. In verse 5, we read, You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. And then in verse 7, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? The psalmist initially in the beginning of this psalm is not, not particularly taking comfort in the presence of God. In fact, the, the psalmist almost seems to wish that he could, he could flee from God. But he goes through and discovers that there is nowhere he can go. I just did a little bit of research under the idea of uh, fleeing from God. And, and I was curious about how long it would take for us to, um, to walk around the world. How long would it take for us to take a walk around the the world. And, and the, real, uh, the reality is that taking a walk around the world would take us about, um, let me see, 8,300 hours. 8,300 hours. That is about 2.7 years of walking at the average person's pace to walk around the circumference of the world, the earth. Now, of course, we can't walk around the circumference of the earth, at least not directly, because there's no overland pathway to do that. You would have to do that differently. However, it is interesting to note that regardless of where you were to walk or how you got there or how long it took you, 
God would still be there. God is present with you. Not only that, but it reminds us once again of God's amazing and awesome scope, who God really is. I was just, uh, when I was searching around, I found out that uh, the sun is about um, 700,000 kilometers uh across. That's its diameter, or the radius of the sun, sorry, and that it has a circumference of 4.4 million kilometers, which would mean, again, if we were to walk around the sun trying to flee from God, perhaps, it would take us about a hundred years to walk around the sun. A hundred years to walk around the sun. And if we're talking about walking around the solar system, we're talking about <laughs> billions of years for us to walk, if not trillions of years for us to walk around the solar system. But yet, on all those scales, whether it's the earth or whether it's the sun or whether it's the solar system, God is there in every place. God is there. There is nowhere that we can go where God is not. Now, not only is that true about physical places and locations outside of ourselves, it is also true about the inside of us. God is in our minds. Not that we're making up God and not that God is our creation, not at all. But if God is everywhere at once, that means he is also in our minds. He is everywhere. He can see what you or I are thinking. The deepest, darkest corner of our mind is not at all deep or dark to him. And David makes that very clear in this psalm. He says there is nowhere for him to go to hide his thoughts, to hide his intents, to hide anything about himself. God knows him intimately. God was there when he was put together. God was there before he was put together. God has always been there. And that should probably be uncomfortable for you and I in some very real ways. Because the reality is that when God see searches us out, when God sees us fully and thoroughly, when God knows our hearts and tests our anxious thoughts, he can see that we are full of sin and corruption by our own choosing. Now, praise be to God, he can also see, somehow at the same time, that we are perfect and spotless because of Jesus Christ, his Son, with whom he is one and three. Right? God sees both the reality of our current sin and brokenness and the reality of our salvation in Jesus Christ at the same time. And he views us as perfect and also as beings in whom the Holy Spirit still has work to do. And he does not condemn us but instead works to clean out our house so that the reality of our salvation in Jesus matches the reality of our actual, factual, everyday lives, eventually. How 
However, there is another aspect to God's presence that we need to talk about. You see, I can be present without being present, right? You know how that goes, right? You've experienced that. Uh, you, I think all of us have experienced that both on the receiving end and the giving end. Right? Where we are talking with someone, I am speaking to someone, and they are far away. They are maybe there sitting in my presence. They are physically present, but they are not mentally present. They are not hearing me. They are not paying attention to me. This happens when people get that far away look on their faces uh, and they're gazing off into the distance. But it also happens frequently these days with, uh, with entertainment, with digital devices, our phones and so on and so forth. You've heard it before about families that go to a restaurant and all four of them are sitting there at the table and they are looking at their devices and nobody is talking to each other. They are there, they are physically there, but they're also not there. But of course, we can't blame that on digital devices like cell phones and so on. I mean, we make our own choices. But it is also true that even before phones or computers or whatever uh, came into our lives, that we were also, and we still are, sometimes not present, even when we are physically present. You know how it goes. Maybe your wife is or your husband is speaking to you about something that you don't really care about. Or maybe they're saying the same thing that they've said so many times before. Or maybe your boss is bugging you about something and you just Tune it out. You just stop listening. Or maybe you just have worries dragging on your heart and someone is speaking with you and your mind is a million miles away. You are present. You are physically there. But you are not there. Now, this is a key difference between us and God. I mean, of course, there is the reality that we are not omnipresent. We are not everywhere at once. We are sometimes even apparently barely one place at once, right? We are, we are physically limited beings. I am here and this is the only place I can be at this moment. I cannot be anywhere else. God, however, is present everywhere at once. But more than that, perhaps, he is present everywhere at once. God is not a God who can be sitting in your presence and yet be a million miles away to the exclusion of you. When God is there, anywhere, which is all the time, he is all there. You cannot distract God. God does not go, huh, what? God does not, does not, so just a minute, I'm not done talking with my friends. God does not say, ooh, I wasn't listening. God is not an absentee father either. Not only is God there when he's physically there, he's really there. He's mentally, physically, all those things, he's there. Hmm. We're getting into really difficult waters. But God never deserts you either. 
God is not the kind of God who walks away. Many of us have been hurt over the course of years, over the course of our lifetimes, by people whom we loved and maybe still do, who were not there for us. They left us. It, it could be a father, it could be a mother, it could be grandparents, it could be siblings, it could be friends, it could be boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, it could be co-workers, bosses, employers, uh, you know, businesses, it could be all kinds of things. But we have all at some point or another felt abandoned, felt alone, felt like people have left us and they were not there for us. whether it is that they truly physically left us or abandoned us, or whether it's been years or even decades of the people we love the most barely paying attention to us and taking us for granted, regardless of what kind of abandonment and aloneness we feel, it is only too human. The reality is, is that all of the human beings that have ever been and ever will be given enough time, except for Jesus Christ, those human beings will disappoint us. I know that that is true for me. I mean to say, I know that as a pastor, I feel very much a responsibility to try to be there for people, to be present for them, both physically and mentally, emotionally, spiritually, to be there for people. But I have not done that perfectly, not by any stretch of the imagination. I know that I have let people down. And sometimes I have let people down in my sinfulness. I have let people down because of my own sinfulness. But sometimes I have let people down just because I am simply not capable of being there for them in the way that they need. And you have done that too. You have let people down and people have let you down as well. It has happened to all of us. But that is not how it is with God. God is always there. God is always fully present to you. God is always fully paying attention to everything about you and everything within you and every circumstance around you. I know. And the Bible testifies that the biblical writers know too, that it doesn't always feel that way. Even Jesus, the very Son of God, one with the Father and the Holy Spirit, even Jesus felt the loneliness and abandonment. He cried out on the cross, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
but God is there for us. God is fully present for us. This is a huge part of the comfort eventually that the psalmist, that David is able to take. David recounts how God saw him from the very beginning, from before the beginning. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And then he goes on and he says, it's just far different from where he started off. He says, how precious. To me are your thoughts, God. How vast the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. And then, knowing that God is fully with him, fully present in every moment. There, there is nowhere that the psalmist, that David can go away from God. You can almost feel David giving himself over to that reality, giving himself over to God finally realizing not only that God will find him everywhere, but also finally realizing that that is not a bad thing. It's like the relief of telling the truth of a secret that you have kept for years only to find out that the secret that you kept, not only has it been known for your whole life, but you have been loved and forgiven and cared for, even in spite of everyone's knowledge of your so-called secret. You knew that this whole time and you loved me and you forgive me and you welcome me. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, what can we draw from this for ourselves? Well, once again, we can stand in awe of that reality that God is everywhere at once. This is one of these characteristics that we will never have. We will never be everywhere at once. God is. God is always everywhere all at once, right? There is nowhere, whether it's the sun, the moon, the earth, the, the galaxy, the universe, there is nowhere that we can flee from God. We can take comfort in that because our God is also compassionate and gracious, and merciful, and holy, and perfect, and full of love. God is love. So we take comfort in the reality that though we are constantly in the presence of a holy and perfect God, he is also a loving and forgiving God who has given us his very own son to teach us and to save us from our own sin. So we can take tremendous comfort in that and we can stand in awe of that again. Wow. But we can also learn something about how we 
can relate to others. It is true that we will never be everywhere at once. But it is also true that we can be more present for the people we are with whenever we are with them. We can be more present in this moment with ourselves. We don't have to constantly be distracted by the technology or the the advertising or the television or the entertainment. We don't need to constantly be somewhere else. We can be here in this moment, at this time, with these people and with myself. And that means that we can really, truly listen to people. We can listen to their stories. We can listen to their arguments. We can listen to their confessions. We can listen to their souls and who they are and what they tell us about themselves. We can truly listen to them and not be thinking about how we're going to respond or not be thinking about what's coming up next week and not be thinking about our own woes and problems, not be thinking about all those distractions in this world, but instead be really, truly there. Be physically present and emotionally present and mentally present Be there. This is part of how we show love. And this is, again, one of the ways in which we do share characteristics with God. And a way in which we can grow in that, too. We cannot be everywhere at once, but we can be wherever we are, fully and completely. There's a scene in um, Star Wars, you probably remember it from The Empire Strikes Back, where Luke is receiving training from Yoda, and he gets distracted by a vision from the future about his friends being in deep trouble. And he he goes, oh no, I gotta go save them. I'm paraphrasing. And Yoda talks about, during that whole episode, about how Luke's mind is always somewhere or someone else. Never his mind on where he was and what he was doing. That's my bad Yoda imitation. Never his mind on where he was. The future. Let us keep our minds where we are. Let us be truly present with those who are around us. Let us live in this moment for God, who is in every moment and everywhere. Let us pray. Father in heaven, please search us and know us. See if there is any wicked way in us, including, O God. If we are not truly present for those whom we love, if we are not present for the people around us, if our bodies are there but our minds are not, help us to be like you truly paying attention. Father, forgive us for keeping our minds distracted about all the things around us. Lord, help us. Help us, O God, to learn from you, to truly be there. And God, help us to be truly grateful that you are there. 
that you see everything in our hearts and minds, that you know every detail about our lives, that you have written out all the days of our lives before even one of them came to be. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to do those good things that you have planned in advance for us to do and to do them in a way that is fully present and full of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.